Good morning, Eric. Hello, Paul. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Good to see you. It was nice to, to catch up at our networking barbecue uh, back in back in June. Uh, that seems to whiz by. Nice to see, start seeing people again. So, how, how have you been? Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, it was a really nice event, actually. It was nice to break the ice, wasn't it? It was quite an informal event. Um, nice to get back seeing people in that sort of setting, really, and have a bit of a barbecue um, outside. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Good. Well, uh, so I've known you for a, for a number of years now. Got to know you and and what you you guys do, uh, your team in Bridgewater. Um, for people that are watching that don't know, if you'd like to say a little bit about your business and what you do, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. So, my name's Eric. Uh, my business is Double Brace, and we are a website and web based software development agency. Uh, we started up very much in the web and design space, and as the year, over the years, we've transitioned into like I said, into more of a software development house, really. Um, been in business for eight years, based in Bridgewater, work with clients all over the UK and beyond. Um, and yeah, no sort of fixed solutions. It's kind of coming up with solutions to meet the business needs, whether that's sort of software integrations or um, a front facing website. Uh, yeah, anything that needs sort of technical expertise, we can get involved. Right, I can't believe eight years. Where's that time gone? I remember like we used to Crazy. catch up and catch up in Taunton at different events. Uh, a few of us, and you know, that you're. So how many's in, how many's in the team now? So there's now ten of us. Ten, um, right? Yeah, we, we took a new programmer started with us um, just about a month ago, actually. Uh, so we've got five in the development team. I'm a designer. Um, we've got uh, we've got a few other businesses as well that people get involved with. Uh, outside of Double Brace, but it's kind of all under the same sort of office and the same sort of offering. Um, and that is, a lot of that is, we've, we've got a warehouse on the back of our office. So as part of the e-commerce offering we've got, we can also do warehousing and fulfillment. So there's some people in those roles that are a bit more admin focused. Okay. Well, you mentioned that the sort of software development. There's quite a few people I know that have originally like built websites, but they've started to is that something that's grown in the last eight years then that you do more of? Yeah, definitely. I mean, and software, we really hard to, we find it really hard to put a name on what we were doing because it, it come from web development, but it wasn't necessarily websites and, and people were kind of, it was very hard to explain what we did. Whereas people started coining it software, which traditionally has led being sort of all in the box, you know, not web based um, on platforms such as, uh, Windows, for example, whereas now the technologies that are being used to power these apps are web based technologies. So we've been really able to utilize, utilize our team um, and building stuff in the browser, which is software. Right. So I guess that's like, you, you know, you'll be able to build stuff bespoke for people's problem solving, like you said, the fulfillment with the e commerce. Is that yeah. like AP, custom APIs and that kind of thing? Is yeah, so a lot of it is integration work, integrating with other platforms into our platforms. Um, sometimes we take existing platforms that have got uh, a lot of development on top of those platforms, so they've become something bespoke. Um, but yeah, 90% of the time it's completely bespoke software solutions starting from the ground up, um, which might have to talk to, to different, different parts through APIs. Yeah, okay. So with, with the team then, going back, last 18 months coming up well two years with what's been happening to all of us i'm yeah. interested in terms of your team how how's that been how's how's the last 18 months been for you guys um so with the remote work inside of it to be honest we actually quite struggled with it as a team um and everybody's surprised at that because they would have thought the web's quite a good fit and i know hmm. quite a few web teams where it does work quite well um, but I think because we're so integrated with the businesses we work with, um, and most of the clients we deal with, we deal with on a weekly, sometimes on a daily basis, you know, we're having conversations with them. And so the communication is so key. And we found not being in the same room, it just added a lot of bloat to what we were doing. We couldn't be as efficient in terms of managing the workflow and, and getting to the, uh, getting into the nooks of the problems really quickly. 
Um, so we, we certainly helped, you know, we're pretty much back in the office now and, and that's really helped. Um, but yeah, so the working from home thing, unfortunately didn't go as well as we hoped. Yeah, that's quite, say that's quite interesting because they say, like you said, a lot of people expect, you know, that, that side of it, the digital side of it, but you say, but it, it just shines how important, particularly say, if you've got a close knit team and close with your clients, how important that is. And it's, it, it was, uh. Yeah, it's, it's always a substitute, isn't it? These kind of things, you know, chatting like we are now online. And, and we found that when we when we got back into the network and it's nothing like those conversations and that because and that, that tone yeah. of voice and, you know, um, that comes across that doesn't come across in an email or any other correspondence. So. Yeah, and it's quite easy to forget that. And whilst I found, you know, Zoom, Zoom meetings were quite liberating in terms of you don't have to drive to a meeting, you know, it's very much turn your computer on, you're good to go. It's much more efficient from that point of view. Like you say, that sort of personal touch and sometimes just, you know, you can solve problems in a conversation that that starts without an agenda. So um, yeah, it, it's certainly different dynamics for, for, for yeah. Zoom and in person, definitely. So, so in terms of like your work and the working practices, you say getting, getting around those sort of issues and, and say, Glad that you're all back in the office, and I say it must be so nice to be back and and have have that sort of rapport where you're face to face. But in terms of like what the last eighteen months has taught you as a team, or uh, opportunities, is there anything that you've discovered that you've been able to change your working practices that have given yeah, you well, opportunities? Um, in terms of the, the 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 demand for digital, it's just accelerated. You know, it's kind of always going that way anyway. And I think the pandemic really just you know, everybody required to, to work in digital more. Um, so if people did, hadn't already streamlined their solutions, it was just causing them headaches, especially if their whole team was working from home. So I think people certainly realized that they need to, they need to act and they need to act quickly regarding digital. Um, so the demand for our services has, has certainly gone up. Um, but I think, yeah, in terms of the team and, and how and how they've coped with it, I think they've, they've done really well, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud of how the team adapted to it, especially because just before the pandemic, you know, we were kind of trying to put in a strategy where we could work with the team sort of one to one on helping them all develop and grow. And that kind of all went out the window, you know, and they've all been pretty understanding of that. Uh, and now we're back in the office. We've started that process again. Um, and hopefully, yeah, we, we can help them grow. But yeah, it's quite sad that the fact we haven't been able to champion that sort of staff development and push that forward as much as we'd like. Yeah. So you, you got some uh, some staff nights out planned. I've seen a few of your nights out on Facebook. They always look good fun at Christmas yeah. at different occasions. So um, um, yeah, so obviously there's chances now to do that now that you can you can meet up again. I just wanted for yourself during, during lockdown and, and say working from home and without that team, how did you... What was you, what what did you find as, as something for yourself personally that helped you through it? Um, you know, whether it's a hobby, new hobby, or something you've discovered about yourself and maybe didn't know. Yeah, sure. Well, I think the first, certainly the first lockdown, everybody was loving life. You know, the sun was out. Yeah, they were spending more time with the kids. You know, it was all it was all sort of just get on with it. You know, and it it was although it was very daunting, it was a it was a welcome change for a lot of people, you know, it's a nice bit of respite, which has really helped. And I think that's certainly something the pandemic has done. You know, most people commenting on how it's given them time to reflect uh, on what they're doing and just step back uh, and look at the bigger picture. So yeah, that's certainly been the case for me. Um, it's allowed the sort of breathing space to be a bit more strategical about our direction. Uh, and like I said, putting stuff in boxes, you know, when we sort of started using the word software for what we were doing that that really straight we always knew what we were doing but it straight away created a sort of more commercial clarity re regarding the offering yeah okay and i noticed you were on your you like a bit of your music you're on your decks uh yeah. playing some music which was which was good i think one of the things you enjoy that that came through during lockdown seeing you up to different things it was a nice Definitely, nice to yeah. see that sort of side of things yeah and, um, I, 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 I've been a keen sort of music producer, well, sort of bedroom producer now for sort of 15 years or so. So, um, yeah, to get on the decks and have a mix was fun. You know, we had a few people joining on sort of Facebook Live and getting all that set up was uh, 
certainly kept me occupied. And I guess, as you know, when you're doing your quizzes, it's, it's the same thing. It just gives you a bit of focus and something to look forward to on a Friday night or, or whenever it was. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, that was part of, of doing, with doing this was to keep, have a project to keep busy and help other people and keep that connection up. As you mentioned, it was nice to have that, that we could do these things virtually. And um, I was listening to something on the radio this morning that was saying about um, classical music has, has really gone up during lockdown because it, they were able to share it a lot more people like virtually. And that really, yeah. really you know, I was listening this morning, that's really, really taken off. It opened up more people as more people embrace, you know, technology, but maybe they haven't before smartphones because they've had to like log in and do this, that or the yeah. other. So I guess for a lot of people, it, it kind of showed the skills gap in terms of technology. Um, mm -hmm. But also I'm thinking for your clients, is there particular clients that, that they realize there's opportunities or, or like you say, the things that they finally get a chance to step back. And you said it's been really busy. People come back to you and say, oh, we now want to do X, Y, Z because of what we've realized is the feedback. Yeah, definitely. It certainly catapulted their need to, to streamline those processes. You know, if there was stuff that was reliant on people in the office and, and they were only had half a team, those things that they knew we're going to be a headache down the line straight away, you know, we're causing grief. So yeah, we were sort of brought in to, to get out, iron out any of those niggles really and um, make them more efficient as it were for, for the future and, and certainly for the pandemic. Yeah. Great. Well, t tell me a bit more about the, about life in the office and the, the kind of the team you've got to the roles you've got and um, your, whereabouts you're based. Sure. So yeah, we're based in Bridgewater. Um, I've been, I've lived here now for 13 years, set up the business, like I said, eight years ago. And, um, the team really is, is development heavy. I'm the only designer. Um, we've got one front end developer and the rest of it in sort of back end programmers. Uh, today we're doing actually our first hackathon day. So I've been putting stuff up on Instagram live, uh, just sort of detailing that process. And we're kind of trying to tie it into a commercial project in some regard, although quite loosely, you know, it's stuff that we'd like to do, although maybe a client budget doesn't necessarily stretch that far, but it's stuff we're interested in anyway. So it's kind of trying to do the footwork there. Um, and they're playing with VR and how we can use VR in the world, real world. Okay. Um, so, so that's a fun, a fun, exciting thing that hopefully I'll be able to share the outcomes with at the end of the day and, and sort of, we're going to plan to try and do that at the end of every month. Excellent. So a hackathon, some people won't know that. If you could elaborate yeah. a little bit more on what a hackathon is, that again? Yeah, sure. So ultimately it's just programmers working in a sprint to come up with a solution very quickly. So it, it, it's not sort of scoping out all the details of the project. It's just knuckling down and trying to, in essence, throw something together to get a working prototype together. I'm not sure if that's the exact definition but in my head. In my head that's no. what it is. Sounds good to me. I mean, the, the nature of the creative, you know, brave industries uh, and the tech industries, it's a very collaborative culture, isn't it? There's lots of people that those things are quite common in terms of hackathons and, and people wanted to share, you know, uh, script they've written or coding, that kind of stuff. And, and that's yeah. the nature of it. And I guess the good thing, I guess, during the, the lockdowns of pandemics, that's continued online and lots of people will be able to connect, haven't they, when they haven't maybe have absolutely yeah and even going back to the music you know there's been sort of listening parties online that sort of got people to gel together and just sort of being in the moment but not being together i think is um there's been some amazing things going on that, that i think that's just going to continue uh but we're also very conscious of now everyone's back in the office we didn't necessarily want it to just go back to being how it was before um and especially now we've been able to grow the team and, and get this new programmer in it's given us an extra freedom just to be able to uh, explore stuff like paired programming where you've got multiple, a couple or multiple programmers working together. Uh, and you know, there's, there's well recorded benefits of doing that, but in every day to day life, when you're just cracking through tasks and getting jobs out, it, it's very hard to sort of squeeze that into the day. So I think what we're doing with the hackathons will, will also spill over into day to day work, hopefully. And once those barriers have, have sort of been broken down, then it, it should benefit everybody. No, that's great. I like see. I like the idea of the hackathons and the, the students that I've worked with at the college. We did a few. Uh, we did a few. Um, I want to call it. Um, yeah, we did a few design bake-offs where cool. we got where we got like a, 
again a couple of hours and and they all really enjoy it because it's say it just takes away those constraints of having to work within parameters and that's yeah. that's when things can flourish where they're kind of the rules are taken and i guess that's that's seen from lots of you know lots of big businesses you see that at google don't you, with their offices and people to be able to yeah. have freedom to not have you know the flexibility of working mm-hmm. um and i know my my um uh, my brother-in-law's um usually works in in the city in london and he's been working from home for and they're going to phase it back into like the you know three days a week he'll be working there because we're going to say we're going to we've missed that interaction face to face yeah and i just wanted because i wanted for yourselves in terms of day to day and what your thoughts are on on working practices in terms of hours because you can be we can all be guilty and i know i am of sitting in front of this screen for far too long and yeah. i wondered like what what are, you, what are your thoughts on your team or, or general how do you think things are going to change well i've, I've been very surprised with our team specifically in, in terms of you know we've kind of given them flexibility to work from home if they need to or if they want to but they haven't necessarily done that and i'm, I'm still trying to work out whether that's because maybe you know when the first one does it they will but then also you know i thought coming back into the office full time or when we open back up, you know, I, I still thought I'd still do a day or two from home and it hasn't transpired, you know, I like being here, I like knowing what's going on, being involved in everything. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, and a lot of people, I understand a lot of businesses aren't even back yet, so how they'll deal with it, I'm not sure. Um, most people are saying it's going to be sort of part-time in the office, part-time at home. Um, but, yeah, long-term, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how that's going to look. Yeah, I think like the same as as a sort of you know very much a collaborative culture and like you know people be able to want to throw ideas back and forth. You need that kind of it, it does need that kind yeah. of face to face that that element and that camaraderie really. Like isn't it just just those okay, those yeah. water cooler moments of just taking ten minutes out to like I don't know throw some about in the office or you know. Yeah, especially when you're integrating new team members as well. I think that'd be so hard to do if you were completely remote. And, and even if you were semi-remote, I think that'd be hard to do because it is it is daunting for new for a new prospect to start in any job. But, you know, I think if there's a bit of um, camaraderie, like you say, or, or just those conversations and, and the odd comment, you know, you get to learn a lot about somebody and they get to learn more about the team. Um, so I think that sort of thing is vital. And I think, yeah, I'm quite concerned at how they will be challenged in these business how how they will be dealt with in the in these businesses that um are just doing remote working and how that's yeah. going to look because i guess that's one of the big the big things about you know a, a business or a brand is to say it's the culture of that company isn't it and how those people finding the right people that fit into your you know, your flavor of your of double brace and what you stand for what you believe in and yeah, and, and you know and that someone's not going to upset that in terms of coming in um mm-hmm. and like I say being a part of that that team environment isn't it yeah definitely yeah because i'm i'm looking at the moment of trying to work to four and a half days a week um i think for me it's it's trying to be guilty of being in front of the, t- of the screen a bit more but i yeah. think it's it's keeping hold of those some of those things we enjoyed uh with lockdown in terms of meeting up with friends or just going for walks or simple things yeah. Um, but I wonder going forward now, now so eight years in and you've got a nice strong team there and I thought what's what's your plan for the back end of this year oh god knows <laughs> you know we're, we're kind of a lot of what we're doing is, is playing catch up you know from from being so busy throughout the pandemic you know we kind of are doing a bit of catch up work um, and, and trying to identify what the future looks like is a process we're very much in the middle of uh, and we kind of, we've always sort of shifted, you know, Double Brace really is, is an amalgamation of, of the software side and the website, you know, it, it was two businesses coming together with, with different skill sets. So we've kind of always swung one way or the other, dependent on slightly on where the demand is, but you know, where our skill set is as well. So I think we're kind of keen to try and push things back more towards the front end and whether we're going to grow the team with, a, with another front end developer and doing the more visual side of it. Uh, that's certainly on the agenda for the next six months, I'd say. Excellent. I still need to come and visit. I think there's a few times I've tried to get something together. So um, you know, nice to yeah, come out and see sure. you and meet, meet the team and stuff. And, um, you know, uh, say meet, catch up with people face to face now that we can. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
It's been great. Uh, yeah, do. And, uh, you know, and another thing in the pandemic, we started working with um, a couple of charities who were working with Stand Against Violence, which you all know from, from Taunton. And, you know, there was that and another project that I kind of buried my head in, really, with, with sort of helping those and, and seeing how our skill set can, can push those charities and businesses forward as well. So, yeah, that certainly helped me focus and get through those uh, uh, long, longer days, as it were. Yeah, kind of, kind of knew if they were coming or going. Yeah, very true. Well, that's that's some nice projects to be involved in, say outside of the, you know, the, the normal working day. So, so that's great. So, um, well, it's been it's been great to catch up with you. Um, I'm sure I see see you very soon. And yeah. um, say congratulations for all the all the work to date. So I can't believe it's eight years. It's just nuts, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, yeah. Thanks for thanks for catching up, and um, I'll speak to you, soon, mate. Yeah, great to speak to you. Cheers, All right. Cheers, Eric. Bye now. Bye.